was the sheer innovation of his famous brand that saw him knighted for services to entrepreneurship. What started as a small idea 28 years ago has turned into one of the biggest airlines in the world. And today, Richard Branson has invited us on the maiden voyage of Little Red to Edinburgh. His airline has won every major travel award because he's always testing his own product. It's a good time for Virgin Atlantic now with Little Red taking to the skies. We've spent 30 years uh, since we started Virgin Atlantic trying to get permission to start a domestic service. And we're flying to a number of cities uh, in the UK. So for people coming from South Africa, they're now going to be able to sort of feed them on to Edinburgh and Manchester and Aberdeen. How do you get your ideas? I mean, are you standing in front of the mirror one day and you say to your wife and the kids, I'm going to space and you guys are coming with me? I mean, if you say take Virgin Atlantic, I was uh, trying to fly from Puerto Rico to the Virgin Islands one day and I got bumped and, um, you know, I managed to find a, hire a plane and I wrote on a chalkboard, Virgin Airlines, $39, single way to Virgin. I walked around all the people who'd been bumped and filled up my first plane and then I thought, you know, maybe if we sharpen up the service a bit, we could start our own airline. So, uh, you know, so a lot, of, a lot of our new ideas come come from personal frustration. The Virgin Group holds hundreds of companies. How do you do it? I love a challenge, and I, I'm, I'm, I have great difficulty saying no. So, if I see a way that we can, you know, tackle the market, um, do it in a different way, give great value for money, have some fun doing it. Um, I'll generally speaking just say, screw it, let's do it. That actually leads me to a question I never thought I'd ask. Richard, how's the spaceship coming along? By the end of this year, all, all, everything will be properly tested and, um, and you know, myself and my family to, start to hit the whole program off will be up, up, up and away. So very, 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 very exciting time at the moment. He seemed just as excited at landing in Edinburgh, and why wouldn't he? The Scots capital gave rise to the imaginations of both Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling and the man who created Sherlock Holmes, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This shop on the Royal Mile could be straight out of a Potter novel, but it's the very real home of Nicholson Kiltmakers, who had much to teach us about the national dress of Scotland. Great story you got, Chad. I didn't even know where to start with all this selection. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, we, we start um, kilts from £345 up to £795. All the kilts we do are hand-stitched and tailor-made to each individual person. In South African rands, or any terms, that is quite a price for half an outfit. <laughs> it is, it is, yeah, but the amount of uh, time and effort and workmanship that goes in that £345 and the amount of fabric as well. There is 7.6 metres of cloth. 7.6 metres in, in one kilt? In every kilt. So this is... Ah, oh, there we go. That would explain the price. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of material. It is. Very warm. Very, well, what about the breeze? That's the problem. That I'm, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> well, you have to worry. If the kilt's made properly, hangs and swings, and uh, it doesn't blow about in the breeze. When you order a kilt, you request a tartan or pattern. And today, there are three and a half thousand to choose from. I have uh, some uh, genetic kilts here that you can wear and choose from as well. Yeah, this one's uh, Western Isles, which is a purple one. Nice Very colourful, eh? Yeah, nice colours in that one. <laughs> um, I have this one, this might suit you as well, actually. This is, uh, <laughs> pink, yeah, pink. I've, I've worn pink before in an insert and I've got a bit of flack for it, so I'm not going to go with that one. <laughs> but I think the, the important question at the end of the day is not which one to choose, but what's worn underneath? Well, if you ask any Scotsman that's worn underneath the kilt, you'll come back with one answer. Nothing. Everything's in perfect working order. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. Jonathan went almost unnoticed in a country where men have worn these for the last five centuries. He was then reminded that Edinburgh is home to the largest arts festival in the world and one of the arts you perform in a kilt is Highland dancing. You're probably wondering right now what I'm doing back at high school. Well, apparently the students here are the ones to teach me how to get my Scottish groove on. Originally danced over crossed swords, Highland dance is an official sport in Scotland, though its technical demands have much in common with ballet, just what Jonathan wanted to hear. We're going to do it with music now when you're ready. Yes. If these dances have evolved through a history of Highland warriors showing their dexterity, then Jonathan had undone centuries of tradition in a single afternoon. Set, point, close, and down. 
Easy. <laughs> Here at Dundas Castle, he hoped to see better results in a new sport with a new coach in Highland Games champion, Neil Elliott. How's it, Neil? Oh, what you mean, man? Good form, you make it look easy there. Yeah, I've been doing the games now for a long, long time, you know. How do you psychologically block out that ice-cold breeze which is creeping up your kilt there? Well, us Scottish men are pretty hardy people. You know, we live in this cold weather. We don't bother about the cold. And you're one of the top five in the country when it comes to that. Yeah, I've been one of the top guys now for a long, long time. Over 20, 25 years now. And to learn the equipment, you need to train for a long, long, long time to get good at it. The Highland Games go back about a thousand years. Yeah, they've been around for just over a thousand years. And uh, it was a, a test of manhood, really, to see who was the strongest in the clan and whoever was the best would be the courier. And that's how the games evolved. And that's where the history lesson ended. Well, we've got the weight here. So uh, I think it's about time you gave us a go and show us uh, how good you are, what kind of a man you can. It's, yeah. a, it's a little bit unfair going up <laughs> against you, but I mean, you know, whatever. You've got to give that a go. OK. Right, so one hand on the thigh. Swing it back once between the legs, drive the knees forward, lift up, and throw the weight up over the bar. Okay. How many swings do I get before I throw? Uh, uh, two or three. <laughs> well done. Here we are now to uh, the caber. This is, uh, in my eyes, the, the event of the Highland Games. Yeah, when I think Highland Games, I, I think of this. Yeah, event, everybody yeah. Has, you know, associates the Highland Games with this event. At almost 6 metres and 80 kilograms, it's a serious pole. So, we're hugging the cable. We squat down, squat down, squat down, squat down, squat down. Till I'm here. The cable toss is said to have developed from the need yeah. to throw logs across narrow channels to cross them. So the perfect one ends with the pole pointing directly ahead of you. And there we go, 12 o'clock, on the button. National pride was at stake. Stand up straight. Right, pull the cable in, pull the cable into your body. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's it, boy. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Right, so what you want to do is, pull in the body. Now we're going to run with it, yeah? Run. Right, we'll tip it forward. Up. Yes! Well done. Yeah. I got uh, seven o'clock. Well done, man. Was that was really, really good. For a first time effort, that was excellent. Whew. Well, here we have the hammer. Kyle's just had a couple of throws. Now, I'm going to show you how to actually hold the hammer properly, and then I'm going to throw the hammer and show you how it's done for real. Okay, so what we start off with, put the left hand at the top, right hand at the bottom, and we swing the hammer from side to side, put it here, and swing. Swing, swing, and let the hammer go. And that was nice and easy. Is it supposed to stick in the ground like this? Yeah, it sticks in the ground. Sometimes it can be so far into the ground, if the ground's so soft, it can take up to two men to pull it out because it sucks itself into the ground. Ah, poof. Two and men that... or just one nail? That's well, all you need. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After the caber, anything was easier. What? Dude. Well done! Oh, that was absolutely great. Well done. Not bad Thanks, for the eh? first time, my man. It's been good to learn from the pros. Yeah, it's been really good teaching you a few of the events that we do, and I tell you one, you're going to be sore tomorrow. I'm sore already, man. <laughs> Let's go and get the hammer. The fun never ends in the Highland Games.